For the past 600 days I've been grinding Minecraft like no other, with the single goal to make the biggest, craziest and bestest mega base you've ever seen. As luck, or in my case dedication and skill will have it, I managed to complete the first stage of clearing out massive perimeters in every dimension after roughly 13 months. Since then I actually built every farm and got some lovely comments about doing things for real, which is why I'm making this video in the first place, to prove this is legit. This means I've got everything ready to start building. Well, almost. You may notice this video is quite short, that's not because I got nothing to show, rather I don't want to waste anyone's time with hideously long videos. The idea is making a list of every item I think I'll need for my megabase, without having a megabase designed. This may sound stupid, but my solution was going through my storage one item at a time, and just thinking how much of said item I could possibly need for my base. I'll give you an example. This is the blue hole, first item being dirt. It's easier to get than grass blocks and they convert automatically. With a base size of 4 million meters squared, and some parts being covered by water, buildings and other blocks, I'll get 3 million dirt. Last video I made a dirt farm, I ran it for 30 hours and there we go, first item done, 217 more to go. You get the idea, so here's the full list and to start off I can remove everything I got through the quarry, which is roughly 50 million blocks. You may be wondering how I'm getting these block counts, my answer is MC Scanner by Skyrising. This wonderful program checks every inventory of a Minecraft world within the generated chunks and tallies up all the item counts in a neat little spreadsheet. I can search for the items and get the count. Obviously I won't go through the list chronologically the way I actually gathered the items, but rather by different categories to make it mostly organized. Usually when building a farm I ran it right after the completion until I had a number of items I was satisfied with. For the basalt farm, at 500,000 an hour, it was 1 million items in total. My gravity block duper and concrete factory produced me concrete and sand in the millions, and my bartering farm added a good 4% to the entire list. Apart from telling you the farm and showing a sped up AFK clip, there isn't really a lot I can do to make this entertaining, but I will still try my best, because this is the last planned and scheduled video marking the end of stage 2. After this, I'll finally start designing and building, so keep those livestream notifications on. While talking, I finished smelting, um, yeah, everything. From deep slate, over grass to kelp, smooth cracked, everything you can put in there. How did I get the fuel? Well, 1500 skulls an hour has some other benefits too, like coal and bone blocks. For every other valuable, I have things like gold farms, quarries, and a huge nether perimeter. But the one thing missing are diamonds. This has been a childhood dream of mine, not becoming the richest, but having a legit 100,000 diamonds. Like damn, how the hell does one get 100,000 diamonds? And where's the promised diamond video from April 2023? Well, didn't really feel worth it making one video about just using a tunnel bore for a long time. I've been collecting these for ages though, starting in the perimeter, I mined for days on end, getting 5, 10, 20,000 ores mined for the first half and another 10,000 for the second. I recorded a good 80% of that process, but let's be real, nobody wants to watch this for over 2 days. If you do the math with the 2.2 times fortune multiplier, this is already 2 thirds to the 100k goal. The last 34,000 diamonds I got from tunnel boring, running the quarry, raiding entities and making a spawn perimeter. I can't be quite sure, but I did this over a year ago, so there might actually be 3 to 4 days where I had more diamonds than Tintomaton, making me the richest hardcore player for that time. Anyways, with 3 million gold and quite a lot more used for bartering, I crafted all the rail types, with the help from my raid farm for redstone and my iron farm for iron. I've got mentioning, with the gravity block duper I made all the sandstone variants, including red sandstone with all its slabs, stairs and walls. This type of block was the most annoying by far, because I set out to craft 10,000 of every single one of these, apart from door signs and things like that. How did I get all those logs, planks and stones? Wow, you really forgot I made every farm? Time to speed this up. I marked everything yellow I can get straight from farm by just turning it on and waiting. If you doubt me actually AFKing all of these, I agree, because there are way too many instances where the hassle of recording myself standing still felt like a waste, so I didn't. The hundreds of hours I did record though can be found in an understood video link below, sped up by 1000 times if you want to see that for some reason. Since I have made all the farms in the previous videos and now ran them for quite a while, I can definitely mark all of these green which already makes this list look way better. The three exceptions are parts of the stone, sandstone and quartz sets, which have a smooth variant. You first need to smelt a farmable item and craft different variants of it afterwards. This brings me to the next major category. 
farmable items that can be crafted into something else. Another example would be shulker boxes. With a shulker shell and tree farm you can craft chests and by adding shells you get boxes. I've marked every item falling into that category orange. As you can see this is quite a lot of things to do and obviously I didn't do it all in order. Rather I've been working on this list throughout playing for the past 4-5 to five months which should give you a better idea how much time was spent on this. In the background you can see me crafting some of these, but again I didn't record everything, because it's crafting. I'm not here to show you 20 minutes of the same shape in a different color flying out of my inventory, but for those people curious, the mod I'm using is called Item Scroller. Removing all of these including the three smelting related sets, this list looks a lot better already. You may think, well, what items and blocks are left to collect, and again I'll split them into categories. Mining, trading and exploring. When looking through my storage, I wanted to get some more dragon heads, as special decoration blocks. The only right number was 69, which led me across the end dimension, greatly increasing my world size, but also fighting over 60 elytra in the process. Using the structure bounding boxes of mini hut, finding buried treasure was a walk in the park, and I quickly got all the hearts of the sea to make 20 conduits for underwater building projects. Trading items was pretty straightforward, with stonemason selling bricks in a 1 to 10 ratio, it didn't take long to acquire 50,000 bricks and their accompanied slabs, stairs and walls. I made some flower pots and kept the rest for pots in future versions. Wandering traders have the ability to sell lily pads and whenever he had some to sell, I bought his entire stock. Lastly, I used golden apples as my main food source and even though tree farms can produce some of them, I mostly get the apples through trading with farmers and using the gold from my gold farm. A total of 196 out of 218 items have been collected, leaving the second most annoying one for last. Mining. Now I'm a huge fan of automation, but some items in the game just can't be farmed easily and fast. This includes super slow nether quarries for netherrack, grass, mycelium and potzo, all ore blocks and coral blocks. Do you notice a theme here? These are almost all natural blocks that change when blown up by a quarry for example, so mining them is basically required. The problem with the nether blocks is there's no machine in existence able to collect these faster than mining them by hand. You can be sure I'm not waiting months to get 3 million netherrack this close to completing the list. So I started to dig and oh my, digging I did. Streaming the whole process to make sure I'm not called out for something I didn't do, I woke up, started to dig and went to bed when it was dark outside again. This went on for a couple days and I quickly got most of the blocks. Mining coral and all the different ores was definitely the most annoying part, so eventually I did give up and removed the goal of collecting a shulker box of every ore, because I didn't even know if I would need that much. And if I do, I can always get more later, but for now I don't want to waste time. Similar for the coral blocks, my goal was insanely high, but I remembered wandering traders do sell every coral block, and with the trade cap removed using Tweakeroo, it still took days to get all the right trades. Cobwebs can be found abundantly in mineshafts, and I mined a bastion to get Gilded Blackstone. This leaves 5000 dead bushes I stole from the mesa close to my perimeter, a shulker box of sponges I got from raiding a weirdly organized cluster of monuments a few thousand blocks away, stealing leaves not only from dark oak forest and mangrove biome, but also giving this entire cherry mountain a bold haircut. The rest of the leaves could be farmed with my leaf farm. By far the two most annoying things on this entire list I chose to do were getting 10,000 of every wood and getting 50,000 oxidized copper blocks. Even with a good copper oxidizer this took over two days of placing blocks and waiting for them to do something, not even mentioning the effort it took getting the copper itself with huge quarries and furnace arrays. But like everything else, after enough time this was also completed. You may think with tree farms getting 10,000 of every wooden block is easy, but no. There's oak, birch, spruce, jungle, dark oak, acacia, mangrove, cherry, bamboo, warped and <gasps> crimson logs. I got 100,000 of each of them. Here comes the fun part. 10,000 wood, 10,000 planks, 10,000 slabs, 10,000 stairs, 10,000 fence, 10,000 fence gate, 10,000 trapdoor, but the worst ones out of all of them, 10,000 stripped logs and 10,000 stripped wood. For every single wood type. I'm seriously questioning my life choices right now. I think it goes without saying, this took a hideous amount of time, around 1.5 hours per 10,000 logs, using up 4 axes. And stupid me wasn't even smart enough to attach this to an XP farm, mending the tools so I kept breaking them on accident. If this video didn't go enough into detail of getting all these materials, you'll just have to accept it this time. I've spent over 600 days of my life preparing my world for the biggest mega base, and to be honest, I am exhausted. I just want to get this video out, being the last scheduled one, so don't expect one next month. Against everyone's belief, this last block means stage 2 is completely done.
Let's end this video on a high note. I reached 20,000 nays. Statistics are on screen. Thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers. Last free world download can be found in the description. Join my Discord for all my mods, textures, schematics, community events. Catch me streaming Architect SMP on Sunday or designing the mega base during the week. Here is the first block. It's going to be huge. I love you all and goodbye.